Hello everyone, my name is Timothy Snow, a Technical Solutions Architect with Cisco Cybersecurity Asia Pacific. I'm welcomed by Mr. Stephen Dane, our Cybersecurity Direct Managing Director for Asia Pacific, and Mr. Jeff Reed, our Senior Vice President for Security uh, Business Group from the U.S. Hi, Timothy. Great. How's it going? Um, so welcome, gentlemen. I'd like to start off with uh, maybe something, an easy question. How would you classify some of the, the, the challenges security professionals um, and our customers are, are facing today? So thanks for that, Tim. I think the first thing is that what we're seeing from our recent report is a significant number of alerts that our customers are facing. Um, when we look at Asia Pacific specifically, uh, we see that uh, over 46% of customers mm. receive more than 10,000 alerts a day. Uh, and that is more than the global average uh, and shows that there's significant stress and strain on the, uh, on the cybersecurity operations right. teams within our customer base. Um, and when we look at that specifically, we're finding that um, organizations have more vendors to manage. When we look at the number of technology vendors that customers use, uh, we see in Asia Pac that 41% of customers use more than 10 vendors. And in fact, 6% of organizations here uh, use more than 50. Um, and so that has a real impact uh, on the team as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and interestingly, those organizations admit that um, you know it's really hard to uh, actually manage this complex environment. 88% of customers say it is somewhat or very challenging. What are some of the implications these challenges have on businesses? Yeah, so I mean, one really makes it hard for the security professionals to cope with these, this environment. Mm. So your ability to attract, retain, becomes that much harder. The other one is they end up being very reactive. So you know, instead of being able to kind of really work on where do you need to take the organization from a security perspective, you know, really just working on all the, you, you can't even get to the alerts that Steve talked about. So it's, it's really, really challenging from that perspective. Jason. Yeah. But I think also what we're seeing is um, downtime being an issue as a result. Mm. Um, and so when we look again at the survey, what we're seeing is that, um, 23% of those organizations that we questioned have downtime of more than 24 hours. Wow. Uh, and that's versus a number of 4% globally. Uh, so that's significantly more. Um, and then when you look at the cost of that downtime, uh, again, the Asia Pacific numbers are uh, more than the global average. And so we're looking at a number of 23% uh, again that um, have that, uh, uh, in terms of their worst breach, more than two and a half million dollars in terms of the impact to uh, their organization. So it's, it's, a, it's a tough problem for them to, uh, to try and uh, address. So prolonged, prolonged downtime, extended exposure potentially during that, that downtime, and the cost of the breaches is, is, is more, right? Yeah. yeah. I think the other thing to point out, though, is around you know, what you do after you get an alert. So mm. how quickly can you uh, remediate? Um, but also, how many times do you actually get to um, investigate? Right. Uh, and so if you have 10,000 alerts a day, um, it's not <laughs> too surprising, is it, really, that you know, only 44% of those alerts are actually even right. investigated, leaving 56% clearly not investigated. And that 44%, only 38% uh, are actually remediated. Um, and that's a real challenge. That means that we're really not solving the problem because all it takes, as you guys know, is one threat to have a, uh, an impact on the organization. Uh, and um, the, the, the ability for you know, our cyber security ops teams to actually respond right. effectively is severely limited uh, because of the volume of alerts and potentially the number of tools that they're using to try and address that. All right, so we're basically, we're, we're, we're picking, um, selectively choosing which event to investigate and hopefully we, we pick right. And yeah. the bad guys, as we know, are, are relentless. So Steve, what, what do you think the cybersecurity professionals and businesses should do to kind of is there a way to get ahead of all of this and, and instead of being reactionary, but kind of go on the offensive and, and you know, what, can they, what can they do? Well, I think there's, there are two things. When we think about that complexity, um, we're really trying to encourage customers to simplify their environments. Mm -hmm. um, and when we say that, we, we are talking about the technology tools that are used uh, within the customer 
should actually talk to each other. And so mm -hmm. those tools need to share information uh, and they need to work together to you know, create a more efficient um, outcome. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we talk about simplification, we're really talking about integration. Uh, and and Cisco is very focused on developing a platform-based approach whereby the technologies that we have in the portfolio are integrated. They talk to each other, they share information, and therefore they're better able to uh, provide a, a better outcome for the analyst. And the analyst, mm -hmm. you know, is in a better, stronger position to act more quickly um, and uh, and respond and be more effective in their in their jobs. It's kind of the, the the better together analogy, yes. right? Okay, yeah. Jeff. Yeah, I'll actually add a third. So the third piece beyond just simplification integration we're looking towards is a zero trust based approach. And look, zero trust has been really talked about a lot. Yeah. At its core, it's something we've been doing in security for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's really around you know least ac least privilege access. Mm -hmm. But I think the thing to think about now is the fact that we're really trying to understand zero trust approach and how it differs depending on what resource you're enabling to be accessed. Mm. And the way we've thought about it is really three ways. So one is zero trust for the workforce. So those are users getting to applications. Zero trust for the workload, the ability for the services within an application to access each other. And zero trust for the workplace, which is really about the, I think almost this environment with you know IoT devices, things connecting to the network. And the critical aspect is for each one of those how you establish trust and how you enforce access is going to be different. Mm -hmm. So for quick examples, you know, for the workforce, so this is users, we're really talking about, you know, using tools like MFA, you know, getting between the authentication process between a user and application is the way to determine whether or not you should have access. Whereas in the workload, it's really about micro segmentation between the the com application components. Mm -hmm. And this is an area that, you know with the move to the cloud yeah. and container base, how we protect workloads is really rapidly changing. And the workplace, you know, the the video camera is not going to you know respond to an MFA ping. So you, we need to do classification of the devices. Use the network. The network becomes really critical from both ability to fingerprint what those devices are and then ensure the segmentation, they get the access to the proper resources. So this is something we're really excited about and I think Cisco is unique in the ability to provide through our products capabilities in the zero trust based approach for all three of those areas. I'd like to say thanks again for your valuable time um, and giving us insights into the regional and global perspectives that our, our CISOs and the rest of our customer base is, uh, is facing. Thank you very much. Thank you.